Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. Welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video series set. In this video we're going to talk about the second goal of section 11.2, determining when a series converges or has a finite sum. So what do we mean when we say a series converges? A series converges, we can add up the terms and get a finite result. So notationally, we can see this here, the sum of the series is equal to L for some finite number L. So the idea is, can we actually add up these series? Well, let's take the easy case first. What about a finite series? Well, a finite series always converges. If we have 10 numbers, we can just actually add them up to get a result. If we have 3 million numbers, it's going to take a lot longer, but we can still just add up those values and find some finite number. So a finite series always converges. But what about an infinite series? Does it even make sense to add up infinitely many things to get some sort of finite result? This may seem impossible. Now, to give us just a, a sense that this is possible, we'll look back and reference a great Greek philosopher, Zeno, and look at Zeno's paradox. Now, Zeno's paradox has many different representations and ideas for describing it. The one we're going to look at is walking towards a wall. All right, so the idea is I have a wall. Here is my wall, and here is me standing away from my wall. And the distance from me to the wall is exactly one unit. Now, I'm going to walk to my wall in a very special way. Each step I'm going to take is going to be exactly half the distance to the wall. So when I take one step, I'm going to go like this. Now that step will be a length of one half. And so then I'll be at this location. Now I'm going to take another step towards my wall, but once again, that step is going to be half the distance to the wall. So that next step is going to be half of a half. That's going to be a step of one fourth. After that first step, I have traveled a total distance of one half unit. After the second step, my total distance traveled is one half plus one fourth. My next step will be half of what's remaining when I step to this point. That distance is going to be one eighth. So my total distance travel will be one half plus one fourth plus one eighth. We can kind of see how this trend is going to continue. My next step will be one sixteenth, one thirty second, plus so on and so forth. And the idea is if each step is half the distance to the wall, Zeno would argue that I'll never reach the wall. Now, with our understanding of some of the limit calculus ideas that we've looked at, and maybe in Calculus 1, we might get the idea that maybe if we took the limit as the number of steps I'm taking goes to infinity, it might actually get me all the way to the wall. So in the limit, I might reach the wall. But even if that was the case, I would have the infinite series here would then be equal to the total distance to the wall of 1. And so here in this example, although we're not doing any calculations, we maybe can understand that it could be possible to add up infinitely many things, but to get a finite result. Now, of course, just going through this heuristic description, we can maybe gain some insight and determine some things. For instance, if our series does converge, if we can add them up to find some finite value, one thing must be true, that the limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity must be equal to zero. What is that limit? Well, this is the sum of a terms of a sequence. So this here could be a1, this here could be a2, so on and so forth. The size of each one of these steps needs to get smaller and smaller and smaller and go to zero. Now I want to talk about this point just a little more because I want to give some examples of why this makes sense, but also make you aware of a common misconception here. What this statement says is if this statement is true, then this statement is true, where we have kind of an if-then statement, where if P happens, then Q happens. And oftentimes students confuse this, and they say, well, if that's true, then if Q, then P. But that's not always true. You can't necessarily reverse the argument of a logic statement. The reverse statement is not true. If the limit is equal to zero, then the series converges is not necessarily true. However, we do have a way we can turn this logic statement around. It would be true that if not Q, then not P would be true. So in this case, we could say that if the limit as n goes to infinity is not equal to 0, then the first part would not be true. In other words, then the series would not converge. And that actually is a true statement, an important theorem, actually. That would be our divergence theorem. 
Now, why would this make sense? Well, in our description of Zeno's paradox here, where we're having this infinite sum that adds up to 1, we can see that the pieces we're adding each time are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and that's basically the requirement. Think of what happened if that wasn't the case. If we had maybe the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of 2i, that would look like 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus dot 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 dot, there's no way we could add up infinitely many numbers if the numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Clearly, that number, that sum, is getting bigger and bigger as well. But even if we had a, a lighter case here, a not so extreme case, even if we looked at the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of 3, right, just this constant number, that series would look like 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus dot 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 dot. And even though the numbers aren't actually getting bigger and bigger and bigger here, the fact is we're still adding up infinitely many threes, in which case that number, that sum, is actually getting bigger and bigger and bigger, which each three we add. And so this would also not converge. So the only way there's even a chance for the series to converge is if the size of the terms we're adding gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so now we have this kind of idea of what it means for a series to converge, but how do we actually prove that the series converges? Well, we have a more formal definition for series convergence. A series converges if the sequence of partial sums converges. If the limit of the sequence of partial sums is some finite number, s, we'll give it a name, then we say the series converges to s, or the sum of the series is s. That's kind of the verbiage that we would use. Now, what does it mean for the sequence of partial sums to converge? Well, let's look at this series. If I wrote out the series in expanded form, what am I going to get? Well, this first piece, this negative 1 raised to the i plus 1 power, if i was equal to 1, I'd get negative 1 squared. If i was equal to 2, I'd have negative 1 cubed, then raised to the fourth power, then the fifth, so on and so forth. The net result of that value is just changing the signs of my term. So I'm writing this out. When i equals 1, I'd get 1, negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. And then I get times 1 over 1, so I get 1. When i equals 2, I get minus 1 half and then plus one-third, and then minus one-fourth, and plus one-fifth, minus so on and so forth. That's what my series looked like. Now, what's the sequence of partial sums? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define some sequence. Here is my sequence, and it's going to look like S1, S2, S3, S4, dot, 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 where S1 is the first term of my series. It's the 1. But S2 is what happens when I add the first two terms together. S2 is going to be 1 minus 1 half, which is equal to 1 half. S3 will be the sum of the first three terms, so that's 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third. But what I also want you to see is that it's basically the last term plus the next term. So this is our old term of 1 half plus our new term of 1 third. If we put that all over 6, we'll have 3 plus 2. Looks like we'll have 5, 6. Let's go to the next one. S4 is essentially going to be our last term, so 5, 6, and then plus our next term, which is minus 1 fourth. Let's put those all over 12, and here we'll get 10 minus 3, so we have 7, 12. So we can keep going with this, but now we see that we're generating this sequence that looks like 1, 1 half, 5, 6, 7, 12s. What does a sequence look like? Well, if we plot them graphically here, we can say that if this axis is n, which is the index here, and then the vertical axis will be s sub n, we can plot this like this. My S1 value was 1. So let's plot that at 1. My S2 value will be 1 half. That's right here. My S3 value, well, that was 5, 6. So that's a little less than 1 half. My S4 value was 7, 12. So that's a, a little bigger than 1 half. Maybe we can see a pattern developing here. The next one, S5, is going to be a little bit smaller than this one over here. So right about there. S6 is going to be a little bit bigger than S4, somewhere in here, and that pattern is going to continue. And what we can see is it looks like we're getting closer and closer and closer to some in-between value here. 
and maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of 0.63-ish, maybe it's looking like. But the idea is that it looks like this sequence that we're generating, the sequence of partial sums, is converging. And so the idea is that if the limit as n goes to infinity of this sequence is equal to some number s, whatever that number is, maybe 0.63 or whatever it's going to be, then what we can say is that the series, negative 1 to the i plus 1, 1 over i for i equals 1 to infinity, converges to that number s, or the sum of the series is that number s. So it's like the definition of showing that series converge. Now the idea is this can be really tricky here. Like why am I not finding a specific value for s? Well the problem is to find out what the series converges to, I have to be able to take this sequence and represent it with some sort of equation where I could really evaluate the limit. And a lot of times it's hard to represent this sequence in terms of an equation. So actually using this direct method to show what a series converges to can be very, very challenging. So instead, we're going to look at two main strategies for attacking series. One, we're going to say that we're going to look at certain groups of series, a certain type of series. We say for this type of series, if it looks like this, then we will be able to represent the sequence of partial sums in some sort of equation. And so I'll directly be able to evaluate the limit and find out what it converges to. And there are certain types of series like this. The one we're going to talk about in the next video is a geometric series. A geometric series will give us a nice representation for the sequence of partial sums, and we will be able to evaluate the limit. Now there's lots of cases where we can't, if it's not a geometric series, if it's some other series where we can't find that nice representation, then what we'll do is we'll use this idea of the sequence of partial sums converging to generate or to create theorems of convergence. And then we'll be able to apply these theorems of convergence to possible series. And so we'll say things like, well, if the series satisfies this and this condition, then by this theorem, it says that the series does converge. And that's what we'll look at in sections 11.3 to 11.7. But the bottom line is whichever technique we use, it is built off of this core definition that for a series to converge, it converges if the sequence of partial sums converges. All right, well, that concludes this video. Thanks for your time.